All right, so now what we're going to talk about is how to make the tool colors here match what's going on in our target application, which in this case is Unreal. Now, because everything in Maya is already managed by Qt, you don't actually have to do anything with your tool appearance. It'll just automatically inherit from the Maya environment. But in Unreal, obviously, we need to make some changes here. So we will take a quick look at Designer. Actually, we'll take a quick look at Photoshop. So I've taken a screenshot of Unreal, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick color sample of this color right there. And I can see that it's going to be 26 in RGB. So now we can head over to Designer. I'm going to select the form here, and then if you go down to Style Sheet, and you click on this little dot dot dot, it'll give you some options. If you click on the little arrow here for Add Color, we can see we get an option for Background Color. And I'm just going to add 26, 26, and 26 here. And we'll hit uh, one more color here. So if you just hit this button, it'll bring up this and it doesn't actually assign it to anything. You've got to tell it what we're using this for. See, so this little drop down arrow will give you that. We can hit color, and this will be the text color. And I want that to be white. So I'm going to hit OK there, and you can see everything adopts those colors. And if we look at this here in Unreal now, what you can see is all the widgets, all the buttons in the layout, they've all adopted the style sheet from the parent because they don't have something different specified. So if I come over here and grab some of these files, we can see that even our sub widgets are going to adopt that same scheme. So it's pretty hard to see these buttons. I wanna go ahead and set up a specific color scheme for these. To do that, I'm gonna head over to Photoshop. And I'll just sample this color here, which is gonna be 56. So what I could do is I can come to each button and I can essentially just say, hey, for your background color, I want you to be 56. And then we'll say, okay. And you can see it has now updated that color. But what I would prefer to do is procedurally identify all the buttons and assign this color scheme to each button automatically. So in the same way that we can identify specific widgets, with specific names, we can actually go through and get all of them. So the first thing I'll do is we'll create a little loop here. So we're going to start with the widget. And then instead of find child, we're going to use a method called find children. And we need to do the exact same thing here, where we're identifying the specific class of widget that we're looking for. And then we're going to do something. And that thing that we're going to do is set the style sheet here with code. I'm going to make a new method here called set button appearance. And the method that we're going to use is Pretty straightforward. It's just set style sheet. And then you just grab that data from right here and feed it in as a string. So in this case, we're not actually specifying the text color. I want to do that as well. That's just going to be this regular color here. We'll select white. And now I'm going to, we'll hit OK. Copy the whole line. And we'll update all of this. And we need to get rid of this new line there. And now we can come over here and just feed in our button. So just to make sure this is working, I'm going to go through and get rid of all of that stuff currently sitting in the style sheet. We can save it. And for now, this is just in the init. You might have another method that sets up the appearances for different components or whatever, but just keep it simple for now. Let's go ahead and reload. And here you can see all the buttons are being updated with the correct appearance without me having to go through and set it for each one. So it's not that unusual to disable parts of the UI while you are waiting on user input. For instance, we've got this import button here, but I don't have a file path where I'm going to actually be importing those files. And that would be a routine thing to need to require. I'm not gonna mess with going through and actually like setting up the file dialog to grab that. Hopefully 
doing that would be pretty straightforward. But what I do wanna do is I wanna disable this import button until I at least have some files to import. So let's go ahead and take a look at doing that. First thing I wanna do is create a button state for a disabled button. So we're gonna hop over here. And I think for a disabled button, I might do something where it's a little bit brighter. So we'll add a background color and we can make this something noticeable, you know, 75 maybe. And then for the text color, I want that to be a little bit harder to read. So we'll go for like a middle grade. Hopefully I haven't completely destroyed the, uh, the readability here. We'll know in a moment, All right? Okay, so that's gonna be our disabled state. So I'm just gonna copy what that looks like. And we can add that over here using the exact same process. And now I'm just gonna add an argument. We'll give a default value, which will be true. And then by default, we'll go ahead and set them all to being enabled. And if not, we'll make them disabled. So now that I've got this set up, this is btn import. We'll go ahead and grab our method name and feed in the argument false. So now it should go through, it'll set all of them to enabled and then it'll get to this line and it'll set this button to this false appearance. So I'll go ahead and clear it out of the style sheets here in the UI. We'll do a quick reload. And here you can see disabled, except it still works. So the other thing we can do, I believe this is something we can just do directly on the button. And I'm just gonna take a guess here. So let's see if that works. Do a reload. Cool, okay, great. So this is now disabled. So let's say if I come over here and I select some files, We'll go through this process, which is gonna be, I believe, down here. I think it's our open files method. So we'll grab that. So what I wanna do is I just wanna make sure I've actually got something. So we'll just do a check on this. And we'll go and grab that button again. And then we can grab this method. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Go ahead and reload it. Comes in disabled, I'll add some files and the UI will automatically update it so that this is now enabled. I can click it and the appearance is corrected as well. So this concludes this series. We've covered the basics of building tool UIs in Qt Designer for both Maya and Unreal. We've looked at a few useful components, including buttons, radio buttons, combo boxes, layouts, and scroll bars. We learned how to dynamically load and unload sub UIs and how to retrieve actionable data from a sub UI. And we covered how to set the appearance of components procedurally. PyQt is an important part of any technical artist's toolkit, and I hope you've learned a few useful things from this series. Feel free to post questions in the comment section of any video. As a reminder, you can find many more tutorials on my ArtStation page, as well as my Unreal Developer Network page, which are linked below. All right, take care.